Now, Brain Awareness Week. What if you want to remember all this information you're getting in these videos? How do you do it? How do you remember something? Well, that's actually a really complicated question that we're still trying to figure out. But there's pretty good theories and we understand the mechanism of long-term potentiation pretty well, but that's not really a brain structure. That's just a process in the brain. So which areas of the brain do we associate with memory? Well, I already said in the first video, no, second one, I think. The cerebellum is probably important for certain aspects of learning. For example, conditioning. What you're looking at here is a brain stem. Okay, so we've talked about this. Here's the medulla, here's the pons, here's the cerebellum. Uh, these fun things are your optic nerve, so your eyeballs would be, you know, information from eyeballs would be coming in there. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about memory. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is take off, if I can, okay, the corpus callosum. Okay, corpus callosum. So now we're looking at the top of the brain. Here you have an insula and here you have an insula. And these things you should now recognize because that's ventricles, right? These are the ventricles. Now here you have a very interesting set of two C-shaped structures. And those two C-shaped structures are the hippocampi. You have a hippocampus on either side of your brain. And these are a couple of structures that, that are kind of fold together. As I said, two sort of C-shaped rings, right? Okay, first of all, you have the hippocampus. Now, if you've ever read anything about the brain and memory, then you know the hippocampus, because that thing always pops up, okay? So this is the hippocampus, right? Hippocampus. Then this whitish thing, that's the fimbria, fimbria of the hippocampus. And then also very interesting, is the dentate gyrus. That means toothed gyrus, right? Toothed gyrus. Uh, because it looks, I don't know if you can if you can see that, but it looks like it has some sort of like ridges in there, even on this model, it's a good model, right? The dentate gyrus. What's what's this this, this weird thing? Well, that's choroid plexus, and the choroid plexus is lined with those ependymal around the cells that, that kind of make your cerebrospinal fluid move, and if you put this all together, you can see why, right? This is the bottom, basically, of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. So that's where those ependymal cells do their work. Okay, well then you have another important structure, which is this thing going up. Okay, it looks like a set of, uh, I don't know, vampire teeth or the teeth of a snake or something. Um, but that's the, these are the columns of the fornix. Fornix means arch. Uh, the story has it that, that prostitutes in ancient Rome would, would hang out under arches of aqueducts and such, and hence fornix, fornix, arch, fornix to fornicate. Hashtag fun fact. Now, important output structure. How does this all connect? Well, there's a couple of fun facts here. Okay, so you have the hippocampus, and that fits back in here. Now, what you will see, come on, you can do it. Okay. What you can see if you follow those the the, the four what's the what's the plural of fornix? Fornis sees. Or is that a verb? No, anyway. The the fornix, okay, you follow one on either side and you see that this kind of bends around, right? Where, where's this going? This is providing input to them two little friends. And them two little friends are the mammillary bodies, the breast-shaped bodies, which uh, is interesting. Apparently someone looked at this and thought, oh, those things look like female breasts. I can pretty much guarantee you that was a male anatomist who had that thought. Now, fornix, output structure, mammillary bodies, what else do you have? Well, notice how very close, let me turn this around so it's right side up for you, how very close the hippocampus is to this thing. You have one on either side, you see that? So now you have another brain structure. The mammillary bodies do something with memory. How do we know that? Well, for example, if someone has Korsakoff syndrome, uh, because they, they, they were alcoholics or something, uh, then people with that syndrome have memory issues, common in alcoholics, right? And then the mammillary bodies shrink, and that's where they are, and we know that people suffer from memory issues. But what's this? That and that, these are your amygdalae. 
or strictly speaking, the amygdaloid bodies, because they're actually a set of several nuclei. And uh, when you say amygdala, then you say emotion, fear and, and, and uh, aggression, but, but also other emotions. And this is really, really cool in my mind. If you look at the bottom of the brain, let me just quickly pull these two together. Okay, I'm struggling with the magnets, but it doesn't matter, I'll just take that piece out. Look at the bottom here, okay? Look at the, whoa. Look at the bottom of the, of the brain, right? Now, now, put these two things together, right? This is pons, this is pons, right? This is medulla, this is medulla, okay? Now notice how close pons, amygdala, right? Amygdala, well, a little under, you can't really see that here, will be about, hmm, yeah, about, about this height. I'm, I'm, this is ballpark, okay? But notice how close the amygdala are to these structures. Remember what those are? The olfactory bulb right above the nose and the olfactory tract. Ah, link, smell, provides input to the amygdala. Amygdala, important for memory and emotion. If you've ever smelled something and it gave you emotional feelings, because it reminded you of the, whatever, the smell of your grandparents' house, or what your grandma used to cook for you, or yeah, this or that, these kinds of things. You know what I'm talking about. You smell things, you think, hey, there's something from my childhood, etc. That's this, that's the amygdala. That's the amygdala doing something with your memory. And because the amygdala receives direct output from the uh, olfactory bulb, or input, if you so prefer, that's how your amygdala can do that. And that is why smells can evoke such powerful emotions. So, a pretty cool memory circuit. There's an amygdala, you have um, amygdala, you have hippocampus, you have the dentate gyrus, you have the fimbria of the uh, hippocampus. Hippocampus, by the way, means seahorse. You have the fornix, providing input to the mammillary bodies, and you have your amygdala, amygdala, strictly speaking. Super, super cool stuff. And that's pretty much it. Hope this was useful. Glad to see you again tomorrow for another episode in this Brain Awareness Week special.